We're starting today with one of my favorite dishes, a savory quinoa pilaf. And it's one of my favorites because quinoa is a high protein grain that cooks between 12 and 15 minutes. So this is a quick dish for those of you that think that you don't have time to cook. I'm gonna show you how to make a meal in minutes, literally. We're gonna start this pilaf with some onions. And onions are rich in sulfur compounds. And traditionally, they were used to help clear congestion, clean the blood. Um, they're really great. And there's a whole entire family of onions. They're called the Allium family. <laughs> the Allium family is leeks, onions, garlic, shallots, chives, scallions. I mean, you name it, it's a really cool family of foods. And they mix, it makes your dishes really flavorful. I mean, there's a reason why people love onions. And then, start to cut. But I'm gonna dice up a little bit of this onion, because we're gonna start with that in our pan. Whenever I'm frying something, I like to start with the sweetest vegetable first, and the onion will almost caramelize inside the pan. So we're just gonna toss this in, and then we'll move on to the other vegetables that are going in here. I'm using a little bit of olive oil, about a, you know, a half tablespoon or so. We'll just drop our onions into the pan. And I'm gonna turn that up a little bit. And one thing that you wanna do is keep your board clean between uh, vegetables, because even though everything's going into the pan at the same time, all of these different vegetables have specific energies, and you want to keep them separate from each other. Um, and then they'll have a party in the pan. They can commingle with each other and have a good time. <laughs> the next vegetable that I'm using is a cremini mushroom. It's actually a fungi, fungi, fungi. Um, and you don't have to wash these. You could just brush them off with a wet towel or a paper towel. Um, because they're kind of spongy, you know, like mushrooms are spongy. So if you put them in water, they start to soak up that water and they get heavy um, and wet. So I'm just gonna pat them off a little bit. And you can see it's getting a little dark here. Just gonna pat them off. And take off the stems. And I'm just gonna do a quick, I'm gonna, look, this one's trying to escape. <laughs> We're gonna put them back on. And whenever you're cutting, if you're new to the kitchen, just remember to keep your fingers curled in, you know, so you don't lose one, because <laughs> that would definitely change the taste of this dish. Mushrooms are also rich in something called germanium, which helps to oxygenate the body and the cells. So I'm gonna put that in right in top. And again, I'm just gonna wipe down my board to keep things separate. We're using some celery. I love celery. So I'm just dicing up this celery and we're gonna put this into the pan too. And I know you guys are wishing that you could smell this. It's starting to smell very good. So our quinoa has been soaking overnight. And I'm just gonna pour off the soaking water and then I'm gonna put it right into the pan with the rest of our vegetables. And another reason why you need to, if you're not gonna soak quinoa, you at least have to rinse it is because quinoa contains something called saponin. It's a natural herbicide uh, on the plant itself that helps to keep bugs away. So it naturally knows how to protect itself. So I'm just gonna rinse this out. And then put our quinoa right into the pan with the vegetables. And I'm gonna finish putting in, let's put in about a quarter cup of cranberries. You know, if you like it sweeter, put in more. Put in a half cup if you want to. And herbs. Herbs are natural digestive aids. You know, so traditionally our ancestors used herbs. They didn't know that this was gonna help them digest food, but it does. They contain essential oils, you know, that helps to soothe inflammation. So I'm just doing a little bit of sage. 
maybe a tablespoon, right into the pan. I'm going to add two cups of water and bring this up to a boil. So I'm going to increase this flame to high. I'm using sea salt. You know, you can use an herb salt, sweet, you know, like an herb salt if you have one, but I'm just using plain sea salt. So I'm going to cover this up. It's going to come up to a boil, and then I'm going to put it on a simmer for 12 minutes, literally. And then, voila, after 12 minutes, you have dinner made. I'll show you what it looks like, the finished product. This is your cooked meal. And you can garnish it with a little bit of cranberries. Maybe you could put a little bit of sage on there to make it look pretty, you know, on the side of the plate or on the top. So this is our savory quiche.